Um, Dr. Dawkins, uh, many traditional hunter-gatherer cultures believe there are other realities, spirit worlds and so on and so forth, and concrete techniques such as the use of psychoactive plants to access them. For example, the visionary brew ayahuasca, used for thousands of years by indigenous cultures throughout the Amazon basin. As a scientist, have you ever seriously engaged such techniques to have first-hand experience of what they're talking about? <laughs> and perhaps even to challenge your own concept of what is real? If not, would you consider doing so? And when would you be ready to begin? <laughs> if you would not consider doing so, then please explain why not. I would be curious, I must confess. I mean, I, I have um, I've read some of the accounts of, of drug-induced uh, trances and things. Uh, there's a lovely one in Redmond O'Hanlon's book about um, going up the Amazon, which you may have read. Have you read Redmond O'Hanlon? Yes. Um, and he uh, visits the Yanomamo tribe, who are sometimes described as the fierce people. And they have a drug which they take by shooting it up the nostril with a, with a great long blowpipe. And uh, I think he, he tries that. Um, I would be very curious, I must say, to take uh, perhaps not that drug, but something like LSD or mescaline, um, as Aldous Huxley describes in The Doors of Perception. Um, he felt when taking mescaline that his eyes were opened, the doors of perception were cleansed, and he saw things that were um, in some strange way beyond reality. Um, I would be prepared to do that under proper medical supervision if I were absolutely convinced that it would do me no lasting harm. Uh, and I would actually like to, to do it. Um, I did once take part in an experiment in Canada uh, where a neurobiologist had developed a technique of passing magnetic fields through the brain um, using a modified helmet, a motorcycle helmet, with magnetic um, coils. And in about 80% of subjects, this does induce some sort of trance-like state, some sort of feeling of uh, oneness with the universe in some cases. In people who, are, uh, who have a religious faith, it tends to induce visions uh, of whatever particular religion they've been brought up with, um, Virgin Marys if they're Catholic and so on. Um, I did this as an experiment. Um, I was taken by the BBC as an experimental subject. Um, unfortunately, I turned out to be one of the 20% uh, who, who are completely unaffected by, um, by this technique, to much to my regret. Um, I was not expecting to see any angels or Virgin Marys. I was expecting and hoping to have some sort of feeling of transcendent wonder, uh, and it's my loss that I didn't. Um, the control in that experiment was a local vicar uh, who um, they thought would be an interesting control. Um, and he actually also claimed that it had no effect. But his EEG record, which um, the scientist, uh, Dr. Michael Persinger, was monitoring, um, showed that actually he was uh, a prime subject, one of the 80%. Uh, and he, the, Dr. Persinger suspected that he wasn't telling the truth when he said that he didn't have any, any uh, trance-like state. Uh, surprisingly, I wouldn't have thought he would have wanted to to dissemble on that. Um, I showed the classic EG pattern of somebody who, um, who, who was not going, to be, well, not going to be a subject. So I would like to undergo some such experience. Um, I think it very unlikely that, it, that whatever happened to me, I would in interpret it as indicating anything supernatural. Um, I would, on the contrary, interpret it as a manifestation of what a wonderful thing the brain is and how um, the brain can see and can experience even more things under the right kinds of chemical um, stimulation. Or uh, other things can do it, like meditation or, um, or, or starvation, fasting.